Hi, I'm Mr. O, the hip hop teacher. I've been teaching for over 15 years. Everything on the spectrum from ADHD to bipolar, schizophrenic, Asperger's, autistic kids, as well as at risk or behavioral, bloods, crips, gangs, etc. I've also taught in the mainstream. I've taught different demographics from those below the poverty line to those in upper middle class, okay? And what I wanna tell you, is one thing to remember for new teachers, it is not like it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when you can focus on just the curriculum, academics, reading, writing, arithmetic, teaching. In some cases, 20% of your time is going to be getting the children ready to learn, getting them in ready position, hands on the desk, so to speak, pencils and pens down, everything prepared, their laptops, their papers, their notebooks, their backpacks, everything right, okay? Before you can even teach, you will have to probably put out some fires. Somebody slapped someone on the head, someone got up out their seat, someone's throwing a paper plane, someone is trying to get on a cell phone. Whatever they can do, the kids, even the best of them, will try to do. And they don't realize that if they're talking and someone else is talking and someone else is going to start talking, your volume level in your class is here. Okay? So you have to be ready for multiple redirections and you're going to have to use different techniques. Like some people use techniques like hold up and the class says, wait a minute, and then they get quiet. Or waterfall and they go shh and they get quiet right for example okay some do like this the teacher puts the fist up or not the fist <laughs> but the hand and when the kids see the hand up they'll put their hands up until everybody notices that oh i'm the only one without my hand up and you know you might use something like this you also need signage signage to so you can point to for everything signage by the door when they get ready to walk out you know or line up if they line up in that school but either way this is what you do you do this number one you line up number two quietly number three head behind head number four wait for the teacher to dismiss whatever it is and don't say line up everybody it's going to be pandemonium everybody's going to run around run to the door you have to dismiss them by person or by table so, or by section, something like that, okay? And the best thing to have is a routine. So if you're a homeroom teacher, you have a morning meeting or you have a library, they know to come straight in and get a book and sit down and read the book. You set timers, you need timers. So you may set your timer for them to read 10, 15 minutes. You take attendance, right? Then they know when that time is up, you might have a... Um, what, what am I looking for? What's the word I'm looking for? I do this every day. I do this every day. I do this every day. So what you got to say? Okay. And so you got to be able to play. All right. <laughs> you can't be too serious because they're kids. Okay. But you got to make sure they get into a routine. Okay. Automatic. You want to make everything automatic after a while. So what I'm saying is a, um, a do now. Perfect word. Do now. Something that after they get in, they read quietly or whatever activities, they look at some morning video, inspirational, or whatever it is, they might share with each other how they feel, depending on the grades, especially the lower grades, pre-K and kindergarten, first grade, second grade, they learn, but I think you should do that all the way up, but sometimes they want to keep talking, and it's going to have to be limited in terms of the time, okay? But the point is, after that, they know, where's our do now, all right? They're ready for it. And after the do now, they know, like, for instance, with me, after the do now, it's science. And after the science, it's social studies. Okay? You see what I'm saying? So they, they should say to you, like they say, Mr. O, hey, we got five minutes before social studies. That's how it should be. The kids should be telling you. And you use or utilize, <laughs> utilize, I like synonyms, utilize the leaders that want to participate, want to help out, want to be a class assistant, you utilize them for because you can't go everywhere. So you need somebody to bring something to the office, 
You need somebody to bring something to the guidance counselor. You need something, someone to write something on the board, someone to push the PowerPoint slide, things like that. Then you have helpers and you reward your helpers. You reward the whole class with things like points, class dojo points, um, rewards at the end of the week, at the end of the month, things like that. They love rewards. They love points. They love school dollars. So you utilize that wisely. You keep everything exciting, but you let them know from the door that you're serious about learning and teaching and you do not like disrespect of the teacher or disrespect of each other. And once you say you're going to do something, like call the principal or call the disciplinarian or email somebody or call the parent, you have to do it because else they're not going to believe you anymore. And they're going to spread the word. You never did that. I didn't get in trouble. No, you, it's like a beehive. So you got to let the beehive know I'm serious. And sometimes someone is used as an example, but it's not your fault. You warned them. You told them they did it. They're the example for everyone else to see. So new teachers, I'm just saying, before you can teach, you have to make sure that your classroom management is tight, okay? Free time, be very, very careful. I should just say no free time. You know, I mean, maybe Friday evening before a major holiday, like <laughs> when you got 10 minutes left or 20 minutes left. But also remember free time, if they can deal with free time quietly, which is almost impossible, right? Then you got to remember they have to clean up. So they got to clean up for in a certain time so that they can go transition. So you don't want to give free time most of the time. Some will say never, okay? You got to be very careful with that, especially if you're a new teacher because you might have the class under control the whole day until you get free time. And that's when guests and administrators and people will walk in and see your class out of control and you have no excuse. Okay, so this is just number one, my first lesson for new teachers and substitute teachers, but I'll get more into substitute teachers soon. All right, but it's very similar. But this is my lesson and I hope you understand. Please give me some feedback. Um, like, share, subscribe, and I am Mr. O, the hip-hop teacher, so I have things for your kids, your children, and um, I got brain breaks. I got, I have brain breaks. I have um, motivational speaking. I have social emotional learning all on my website and my YouTube at the hip-hop teacher, okay? The hiphopteacher.com. Um, I have all kinds of things, how to write essays. I rap. And um, I rap about science, I rap about math, PEMDAS, it goes on and on. But anyway, right now, if you're starting new, just know, don't go in there like, oh, I'm going to teach and it's in my heart. Yes, it should be in your heart and you are going to teach. But you guess what? You're going to discipline. You are their parent now. Some parents are overwhelmed. Some parents just don't know what to do. Some parents... They just It just doesn't translate whatever they teach them at home. It doesn't come into the school sometimes. So when you're the parent and the principal and everyone doesn't like you calling them every five minutes because Tyrone or Shalanda or Mikey or whoever is acting up. Okay? All right. So you get control of that class. Okay? That's it. I could go on forever. Talk to you soon. See you soon. I'll be back. All right. Mr. O, because I flow. Now you know. Hey, yo.